Well, we're ready for the second part of our search marketing discussion. And you might remember that the whole reason that we're talking about search marketing is because they, that is your customers or potential customers, have to be able to find you. And you also might remember that as I ended the first part of our search marketing discussion, I posted an alert. What was that alert? Think about it. Do you remember the nerd alert and the caution? I said what was going to come now this week or in part two was uh, what I called techie talk. And you shouldn't panic, though. Remember, I, ca I cautioned you and said, or I tried to console you and say, now, don't panic. It's fairly simple techie talk. And some of it's going to look like marketing, but, excuse me, some of it's going to look like programming. But in fact, it's really web marketing. It's something that if you have some responsibility for getting people to come to and use and shop and buy at your website, right? It's something you need to know the basics of. Even if you have programmers working for you, you need to be able to tell them what is in the contents. Or perhaps you hire a search engine optimization firm to come and uh, do, th do things for your website, you still have to know how to communicate with them. You have to know how to look for or how to understand what it is that they're doing. So what this part of the search marketing lecture has to do with is leaving clues for those search engine spiders. Leaving clues for the search engine spiders. Okay. And I blew up a graphic I used in the first presentation and, and said, you know, you have these software programs basically that people call spiders that are crawling around the web and they're looking for things on web pages. So they're sensing links and they're taking information in and they're sending information back to their search engines themselves. And the whole reason for them is so the search engine can understand what every page of your website is about. Okay? And what you need to know how to do is how to leave clues so that the spiders correctly interpret what each web page on your web page is about. Okay? So you need to leave those clues. And in fact, while I'm saying you need to leave the clues on the web pages, Really, what you're doing is leaving pages in the, or leaving clues, excuse me, leaving clues in the HTML code for your web pages. Okay? Leaving clues in the code. So let's take a look here at the code for a web page. This happens to be the code for Dr. Wilson's home page on his Web Marketing Today website. And the code has English language things in it, but the, but the words themselves, like web marketing today, e-commerce, email marketing, those are surrounded by HTML tags, hypertext markup language tags. And what this lecture is about is preparing those tags so you can give as many clues as possible to these web spiders about what this web page is all about. Okay? And I might start off here before we leave this web page and just read the first thing that we see. First of all, here's the heading for his web page. But the very first thing we come to there is the title tag. The title tag. And for Dr. Wilson's web page, home page, this says Web Marketing Today, E-Commerce, Email Marketing, Internet Marketing, Wilson Internet. Okay? Remember those terms. Web Marketing Today is the first thing in the title tag. Okay? 
So, for both search engines and for searchers, the most important element of a web page is the title. For both the search engine and the searcher, the most important element is the title. And since we're talking mainly about search here, we'll go ahead and say that search engines weigh the title tag fairly heavily in deciding what keywords are important for a particular web page. Okay, so that's pretty important. That's why it's, you know, a lot of people say most important. And I think you need to understand what the title tag is not. What the title tag is not. The title tag is not the same as the web page's headline. The big text you see that identifies Wilson Web or whatever it happens to be, Web Marketing Today. In fact, the title tag doesn't even appear on the web page itself. It appears in the code for the web page, but what the title tag is, is the text that is visible in the very top, the uppermost bar of a web browser. Okay, so if you use Internet Explorer, the title tag is the very first line of that explorer. It's what shows up there. And the title needs to be focused, not general. That means focused on the keywords that are important, right? And so the focus means the most important keywords should be first where the spider can quickly see them. Okay? And that's called keyword prominence. Remember back or look back on your handout to Dr. Wilson's eight, uh, home page. Notice that in his title tag, the very first words are the name of his website, Web Marketing Today. But he has chosen that name strategically for search engine optimization. He's chosen that strategically. He has put what his website is all about, web marketing, prominently in the title. It's the very first thing that the spider is going to encounter. Okay? And I might mention to you that Dr. Wilson has been around long enough and studied this long enough that if, in the West at least, you go to Google and you Google the phrase web marketing, Dr. Wilson's website is going to be number one or number two. He knows search marketing, and he knows web marketing. Let's look at an example. Let's look at an example of how we might write a title tag. And the way we'll do this is we'll take a hypothetical firm. We'll call it ABC Ammunition Incorporated. And we'll assume that ABC recently acquired the Draculin, like Dracula, the vampire, the Draculin Ammunition Company. And Draculin Ammunition is a manufacturer of silver bullets. Silver bullets, if you don't know the Dracula story, supposedly silver bullets can kill a vampire. So ABC's key offering is no longer just any bullet or any gun shell like it used to market, but now it's silver bullets. That's what's important silver bullets, right? And to make this easy, we'll also assume that ABC is the exclusive supplier of silver bullets, these unusual items, and people want them. There are really people out there who want these things. Okay? So, hypothetical firm, ABC Ammunition, recently acquired Draculin Ammunition Company. Draculin makes silver bullets. Now, ABC isn't just a bullet seller. There might be hundreds or even thousands of those on the Internet, but it's silver bullets. People want them, and ABC is where you get them. Okay. So, if we wanted to provide the most clues to spiders, and for that matter to humans, in our title tag, the title tag of ABC's home page should read like this. Silver bullets 
from ABC Ammunition, formerly Draculin Ammunition. It should read right like that rather than simply ABC Ammunition Incorpor Incorporated. By reading like this, we've left the most clues for the search engine spider. And we've left out anything that people won't be searching on while still making the title readable. And if we do that, that'll please spiders and it'll please humans. It will please people. Notice that since our main offering now is silver bullets, we've put that prominently, that means first, in the title. And in case somebody used to get their silver bullets from Draculin, we've put formerly Draculin ammunition there. So somebody searching for silver bullets, ABC ammunition, Draculin ammunition, hopefully we'll have a better chance of finding our website when they search. Now, it's wise to limit the title tag to about six to eight words. And the reason for that is that Google, and for the most part the other leading search engines, only displays about 60 characters for searchers to see. It indexes more, but it only displays about 60 characters. So, to the extent that you can keep it to that length, uh, and have a good, have the title tag contain some of your leading keywords, it will help the search engine know what your web page is all about. The other thing I need to mention here is that web pages in a website's interior should not repeat the home page title tag. They should not repeat the home page title tag. Instead, what they need to have is their own specific title tags that contain the keywords that are suited to their own individual content. As Google's robot spiders your website, crawls your website, it gets confused if it sees the same title tag over and over again. And we don't want to confuse that spider. So, each web page on the interior of your website, that means web pages that you go to from the home page, needs to have its own specific title tag that contains the keyword or keywords that are suited to whatever its content is. So, the spider has crawled your website and it's come to your title tag and it's noted what's in that, right? And a good title tag is going to help lead a spider to a good idea of what a web page is about, but spiders don't stop with page titles. So, if you have one on your web page, the next thing a spider sees is the description meta tag. The description meta tag. And this tag exists as just a short textual description of the page content, page's content, right? It's just a short bit of text that describes what's on the web page in question. Take a look at a little example here that's going to pop up. Here is just a little uh, clip from some Google search results. And at the top of the clip, you see the uh, title of the website that's come up in the search results. And below it, you see the description and then down here at the bottom, you see the source code for the web page in question. And in that source code, take, take a close look, you can see the HTML code for the description meta tag. 
It's right here. Meta tag name, description, the contents of the meta tag name, official webmaster slash site owners help center where you can find tips and tutorials on using the product and other answers to frequently asked questions. Right? That's the code. And then if you go back to the top of this little picture here, you'll see where that description tag text is displayed in the Google search results. And you see it here. Official Webmaster Site Owners Help Center where you can find tips and text uh, and tutorials on using the product and so on. Right? Okay, so that tag provides a textual description of the page's content. And interestingly enough, search engines do not use the keywords or the phrases in this tag for rankings, but, and this is a big but, the meta tag descriptions are the main source for the text you see displayed beneath the listing, as we just saw, right? And if you'll think about it, what that tag is doing is it's functioning as advertising copy. It's an advertisement, basically, and it's designed to attract its reader to your website from the list of search results. Someone's gone to Google, they've searched for a keyword or a key phrase, your website has come up, its title's there, the description's there, and if the searcher reads that description and the copy for it is written well, it's going to prompt them to click on that result for your site so they come to your website. All right? Well, there's also a meta tag called keyword or keywords. And some web pages may include that meta tag as well as the description meta tag. But, and this is a big but, the data it includes has not influenced search rankings in Google and Yahoo and Bing for several years. And in fact, Bing even considers excessive or irrelevant use of meta tag keywords as a spam signal. In other words, Bing penalizes the practice, Bing penalizes the practice in its rankings. Furthermore, anyone, competitors included, can view your HTML source code and they can learn the keywords you're targeting in your online ad and SEO campaign. And do you really want to know, want your competitors to know that information? Right? So, based on the fact that the keywords meta tag doesn't influence search rankings in the leading search engines, and based on the fact that it does give your competitors some key information, most experts advise to leave the keywords meta tag empty. Leave it blank. In other words, they advise not to use it. Now, if you were to look Oh, as recently as five years ago or so, at advice about uh, search engine optimization, you would find advice that talks about using the keyword meta tags. Uh, what my guidance here is if you go online and you want to Google something like uh, best search engine optimization practices, make sure the documents you're viewing are current documents rather than older. As we've said, this whole practice of search engine rankings changes all the time. 
Next in line are your heading tags. And what your heading tags are, are section or paragraph titles. In HTML language, they're the H1, H2, H3 tags. And what spiders do is they scan your headings for keywords to obtain more clues about what the web page is about. And they usually begin with the name of the web page, that's the article title, and that's usually found between H1 or H2 tags. And then they progressively work down the page. And Dr. Wilson says that writing with subheadings facilitates easy analysis of web pages by spiders. So he recommends that each hub set, each subheading, H3, for example, contain an important keyword for that section of the document. And just like subheadings make it easy for readers to scan the document for meaning, they also make it easier for spiders to do the same thing. So the spider is going to find the heading tags. H1, H2, H3 are sort of in order of importance. They scan the headings for keywords to get more ideas about what the web page is all about. They begin with the H1, H2 tag, work down the web page. So if you can write subheadings well, that facilitates analysis by spiders. And it also makes it easy for people, or easier at least, for people to do the same thing. Okay? Well, ultimately, it's the body text of a page that's critical to search engine optimization. And the reason for this is that spiders are used to attempted tricks involving titles and meta tags and headings. But when they encounter the body text, they can easily spot this deception. If the body text doesn't agree with the titles and the meta tags and the headings, they know something is fishy, we'd call it. Something's funny. Something's wrong. Right? Because the body text is what the page is, right? The body text is what the page is. So a spider quick, quickly scans main points. It records important keywords and even synonyms for those keywords. And just like humans, when they read an article, a spider is going to expect to find the most important ideas in the first paragraph, right? And sometimes the spider will also find a summary paragraph. So when the spider looks at the body text, right, they're going to know this is what the page is all about. So they're going to scan for the main points. They're going to record important keywords, their synonyms, and they're going to expect to find the most important ideas and keywords in the first paragraph. And then sometimes they'll look at a summary paragraph too. And if it is a good web page, the keywords found in the first and the last paragraphs of the body text repeat the keywords that the spider already has found in the title and in the description and keywords meta tags and in the headings. Okay, so you're going to have consistently consistency. And if that's so, they give the spider important clues. All these things give the spider important clues about what the real focus of the web page is. Okay? So think about that again. If you have a good web page, the keywords found in the first and the last paragraphs of the body text repeat the keywords found in the title and the meta tags and the headings. And if that's the case, that gives the spider important clues about what the real focus, the real purpose, the real meaning or thing is about your web page. Now, let's go back to the ABC ammunition scenario that we talked about. Remember the company that bought the Draculin 
silver bullet company, Dracula and Ammunition, that made silver bullets. When the spider sees congruency among the title, the meta tags, the headings, the body text, the search engine is going to rank the page higher for silver bullets and ammunition because the search engine is confident that the page is relevant to those particular keywords. In other words, if everything on your particular web page, this would probably be the home page, is congruent. That means it all speaking about the same thing, all giving the same clues. Then the search engine is going to say, the, excuse me, the search engine is going to say, this page is about silver bullets. This page is about ammunition. It's going to be confident of that and you're going to rank higher for those terms in the search engine rankings. Okay? Get the picture. Body text consistent with all the other things that we've talked about here. Well, spiders also scan hyperlinks on your web page. Now, this is different from pages linking to your page. These are hyperlinks that you have on your web page going to other web pages either on your site or elsewhere. So the spiders also scan these, right? And they look at the on-page text and the hyperlink syntax itself. In other words, the HTML code for the link itself. Okay, so what the actual text is on the page is important, but so is the URL of the link itself, the syntax of the link. Let's get an example. If on the ABC ammunition site, some hyperlinked words, in other words, the text on the site, say advantages of silver bullets, the spider notes that. That's the words in the paragraph or in the, in the title, for example, that's hyperlinked or perhaps even in, in a menu. Okay? Now, if the file name of the URL in this hyperlink points to silver-bullets.html.html. That yields the kinds of kind of congruency for which spiders are searching. In the on the page, the spider sees in what's displayed on the page advantages of silver bullets, but that's hyperlink. So if the hyperlink also says silver bullets, right, the spider is reasonably certain now that this web page is about silver bullets, right? So when it sends its ranking recommendations to the search engine, it will include that information. It'll, it'll basically send back and say, I know one thing this web page is about is silver bullets okay is silver bullets I thought it might be good to give you an example of an actual web page showing the congruency between the text that you see on a screen that's hyperlinked and the URL or the address in the hyperlink itself and I decided a good way to do that was with a uh, little bit of text just one paragraph of text from Dr. Wilson's web marketing today home page as it appeared when he was editor of that publication again he sold that in uh, 2012 but here's how that page started we offer the web's largest source of key information about doing business on the net with over 2,500 pages and annotated links to more than 21,000 resources on e-commerce and web marketing. 
You'll also find over a hundred video interviews with experts on internet marketing, e-commerce, and email marketing. What I want to focus on is this hyperlinked phrase, over a hundred video interviews. Okay, and again we're looking at this to see what I mean when I'm talking about congruence between the hyperlinked text that contains a keyword that I'm interested in and the HTML code itself that's behind that link. Okay? So when we look at the source HTML code from that web page, it starts off with a, uh, with a new paragraph here and says we offer the web's largest source and so on and key information. Then I it omitted a bunch of stuff. And then we get down to the piece of code that includes the hyperlink for this over 100 video interviews. And it looks like this. Now I'm not going to make a coder out of you, but it's very easy to point out what I mean by this congruence. Within this uh, code, it tells us that the uh, web page to which this hyperlink is referring has a URL or an address that looks like this. HTTP colon slash slash www.wilsonweb.com slash videos. Okay? And I've highlighted the word videos because it is congruent or it goes along with the fact that in the text on the home page that has the link, the word video is there. If a spider were looking at this link and then looked at the address to which that uh, points, it would see a link there. This has something to do with videos. Okay, that's the congruency. Now that's all I want to talk about here with respect to the second part of my search marketing presentation, but there is one more slide. And you'll see on the slide that follows this one a link to a presentation by Google on how search works. It has six parts. I'd like you to go through all six parts. It's relatively short in, in length, the whole presentation. But it's good to hear from Google itself about its explanation regarding how search works. There are a couple of short videos in it. I encourage you to watch those. I think it's very informative. It's a good thing to do before we go on to part three of my search marketing lecture. So I'll pick up with you again when part three begins.